good morning sajanya so you did not join yesterday am i audible to you sajanya you are audible no sir to give brief about yesterday's session sajanya we have discussed about the uh architecture of kamunda 7 and kamunda 8 i believe if you have not joined uh i recommend you to just go through with the yesterday's session which has been recorded and you can connect uh with the the training coordinator and she can help you in order to uh get the details of that particular recording okay and with that uh like yeah. these today we have moved we are moving to the another day what we are going to discuss basically is installation and setup of kamunda okay so when we talk about the installation and setup of kamunda there are various ways of doing that but in today's exercise we'll understand what are the uh, different uh, versions or types of installations we have so basically as we know right it is also available as a community version which is free to you and then uh, we have what you can say uh, for the learning purpose right we have enter we have enterprise version first okay so enterprise version or you can also say the license product that comes uh, which will be used by the different organizations which is like a paid product okay uh, we have to buy a license for that and it has some additional uh, what you can say features uh, along with the uh, you can say uh, more rapid customer support based on the type of uh, what you can say enterprise or license uh, an organization is buying out right based upon there are different what you can say plans are there silver gold and platinum so based upon that the customer support is uh, like you can get more proactive features with that but to give a brief about that if an organization want to use a license with them right which is like the, for production ready application the recommendation for community version is you should use it for the non production environment which is free for use as recommended by the product however if you are creating any mission critical application for the production ready deployment side it has been recommended you should use enterprise version so as it's a licensed product right so we have two things we can do it for learning purpose where we have a trial version is available okay which is completely free to use for 30 calendar days okay it comes with the complete suite and the latest version which has been running however if we are want to do uh, for any production or organization purpose right then uh, what we can do is we can uh, do the installation basis microservice architecture okay we or we can also do a containerized deployment okay what is the mean by that containerized deployment is like we can also use docker for non product applications usually okay or we can use kubernetes for prod related applications now we have two different versions are there i believe up till now you have uh, brief understanding about the two major versions of kamunda which is kamunda 7 and kamunda 8 right so major differentiation between them is uh, the the architecture style okay and uh, the different components what uh, kamunda offered so what we are going to do is we have uh, like latest version which is kamunda 8 right kamunda 8 comes with two different uh, what you can say offerings which is saas based and self managed okay so as name suggests right saas is a service as a software uh, where uh, when you are taking a 
enterprise version of Kamunda 8 with the service as a software. Organizations uh, need not to worry about any, uh, what you can say, had a additional headache of uh, managing the infrastructure uh, for deploying and managing the clusters for Kamunda. Okay, that will be taken care of by the product itself. Okay, however, it comes with an additional cost as well as it is providing you an additional feature of managing the infrastructure. And second part is like self manage, where uh, like organizations will be uh, like managing their own infrastructure and they are just buying the licensed product of the product. So uh, in SaaS version, right, when organizations are preferring to uh, take care more of the development activity, right, they just want to quickly initialize the development activities, they can go for SaaS version. And also, if uh, they don't want to uh, uh, have a headache for managing the infrastructure, then also SaaS is a, one of the preferred uh, option for those kind of organizations. But if it case uh, like costing is a problem, they are already managing what you can say their own infrastructure and they don't want uh, to allow uh, Kamunda as a product company right, to manage their own infrastructure, maybe due to security and any other uh, what you can say conflicts. Though in the SaaS version as well, they uh, ensure the scalability security issues, right? As per the standards of uh, what you can say security compliance it is there but there's still some organization don't want to go with that then they can go for the self management so here right what we gonna learn is we will be installing amunda 8 service as a software okay and for doing that uh, it is quite easy and after installation why we are doing it uh, very initially right into uh, like as of now, we have not gone through the topics of uh, what is a BPM and what is a case management, what is an DM, and I believe few users are already aware about that. Okay, but like many uh, users, right, uh, who are taking this training, they are not uh, aware of the fundamentals of those. Okay, what is the purpose of those elements, which is very very important when we are uh, learning this from basics to an intermediate level. So why we are installing it? First thing is we should understand uh, how this product looks like, what are the core components it has. And when we are learning the basics of BPM, right, starting from uh, events, gateways, and activities, uh, the things which we are learning, right, we are also going to implement it, okay, which makes you uh, familiar with the product itself. Uh, like for a month or so, we'll be uh, using this product, right, in order to do the de uh, development and doing the hands-on activity. So with that, right, when we are toggling here and other one or other component, right, you will be familiar with that product by itself. Because in the end, once the training is getting completed, you should be able to uh, like uh, uh, comfortable with this product, where at least you should uh, individually can create your uh, workflows and also you understand what are the different components where you have to go for when certain uh, like monitoring or analysis you have to done, right, how to move there. So it comes when you do the practice and that practice will be doing when we are learning itself. Right, so basically what I mentioned, right? So these are the different, uh, what you can say installation types are there. We have an open source. So for open source, we can download We can download uh, the Kamunda 7, right? Open source community version. So it has the latest version of 7.19, okay? Which comes with the, uh, uh, like all the particular artifacts. And they mention also, like when you are using 7.19.0, what is the prerequisite for that, okay? So you should have a JDK 15 and at least Kamunda modeler. So what is Kamunda modeler? What is Fastlayers? Okay, what is uh, uh, Web Console? What is Kavimo? What is uh you can say optimize operate cockpit all these things these are the components okay uh, naming convention uh hinder here and there based upon the what type of version we are using but uh mostly it it remains the same okay so right if you want to install uh, the open source it is pretty easy okay which is having very basic features involved so what you can do is you can download one of that zip file okay after that, once you download it, just exact it, keep it in one of the uh, location of your system. 
and it comes with the, what you can say uh, pre-built uh, script files so it depends upon which type of uh, system you are using either windows or mac right based upon that there are dot uh, bat or dot sh files will be there okay in that particular folder so just you have to uh, click on that particular uh, dot start dot bat file or start dot sh file okay uh, once you run that particular command uh kamunda 7 right with the latest version will get started you don't have to do anything else okay so uh, internally it will be uh handling all the database related operations right, into in memory database so even you don't have to uh, configure any database as well just download it and you can click on that and once it has been done right so internally it is uh like having the tomcat engine as well so as we know the default port of uh, uh, tomcat is 8080 Based on that, you will get a, uh, what you can say, Kamunda up and running in few seconds or minutes, depends upon your, uh, what you can say, uh, the configuration of your system as well. But I recommend whenever you are running uh, this Kamunda, right, you should have at least a RAM of uh, minimum 4 to 8 GB, 8 GB is preferred, okay? And at least you should have some free space of at least 10 GB in your system. And uh, the prerequisite is like you should have uh, Java to be installed in your machine. Apart from that, you should have a browser in your uh, system. Okay, it could be any browser, like it could be a Chrome, Safari, or Mozilla with the latest version. That uh, is something which is enough. But apart from that, when we are creating any Spring Boot Microsoft, just give me a minute, guys. Hello. Yeah, I think I was on mute. Sorry, guys. I, there was a yeah, yeah. There was a noise from the background, so apologies for that. It comes usually daily this time. Okay, so let's get started. We'll extend for some more time. Okay. So yeah, what we were discussing about is like. Uh, so uh, we can do the installation of community version in that way just uh, download that file and after that yeah you can see the installation steps are all already mentioned here based on the type of uh, os you have in your machine you can click on start.bat or start.sh and after that once you do that right this will be the default url which will be open okay and based on that you can access the different what you can say components of your mm, kamunda in the open source like cockpit and task list and for modeler you can also uh, download uh, what you can say kamunda desktop modeler as well which is like open source community system. so to download the desktop modeler right this is these links i will be sharing so if you want to uh, work on open source desktop modeler you can download uh, the modeler based on your preferred choice right what type of os you are having either mac or windows and based on that in windows you have 32 or 64 bit based on that you can download it and it will be like uh, something yeah there will be a zip file okay which you can uh extract and based on that what modeler will do is it will be uh, helpful in order to create our workflow using uh bpmn and uh, dmn standards and notation along with the ui forms but same thing uh, will be like uh, similar to kavimo right which is part of the enterprise version it is also used for designing the workflows we have a web based console which by using which right we can create our workflows so that will be part when you are uh, buying a enterprise version okay so this is about the download of uh, open source and if you want to use modeler separately right you can do that however for, for this trial purpose right what we can do is we can install a kamunda 7 or kamunda 8 so again for installing the kamunda 7 what product is recommending is as uh, they have the latest version available right usually that will be there but still if you have a requirement for using the enterprise version of kamunda 7 uh, you can provide some prerequisite details to the product and based on that you can notify them and they will get back to you for uh, like uh, by sharing their uh, license file for a trial version of few particular days and 
with that for our learning right and actual installation what you can do is i'll share this link okay based on that what you have to do is just have to either uh, give your details these are just four details are there you can provide that and based on that you can sign up okay with that you will be getting uh, the latest version of kamunda 8 okay which is i think 8.3 uh, as a beta version and uh, um, it will be a saas based so you don't have to take care of uh, any infra or any installation or setup which means uh, internally right there will be a uh, you can create your own cluster okay on which uh, your gb and other engines will be running right so that will be taken care by them it's a 30 days professional addition which has the latest uh, what you can say features and all uh, the like you can say latest option for deployment monitoring and reporting purpose right whatever uh, uh, features an enterprise product is having you will be getting all such features apart from that if you don't want to give these details uh, i believe everybody will be having either a github or google account right so you can also sign up with your uh, google account or a github account so it will take only just few seconds if you want to uh, download uh, or if you want to enable the enterprise version of common right apart from that if you want to do it by your own uh, setup right then there is a download option is there for self managed system okay it will go with this uh, saas version so uh, we can uh, prioritize on on learning the concept so that link i will share and maybe one of you can share the screen and based on that if there are any issues or maybe you don't share the screen it won't take more than 2 minutes time okay so if you face any challenges right just let me know but first download that with that i'll pause for uh, what you can say a few minutes so sojourney and naga uh, what i'm expecting is with this link right you just uh, do the installation and start so you want to share the screen sorry uh, hi Deepak. Uh, you want me to share my screen and uh, proceed with the installation see if you are uh, facing any error right it is just straightforward okay so if you are yeah, facing yeah. any error then you can share the screen but with the time i think you can go ahead without sharing as well naga sojana can you please confirm if it is done you are able to do the uh, sign in uh, Deepak, I've just logged in to Kamunda, so I'm just giving detail. This will be wait, uh, we need to wait for another minute. Just give me a minute. You can also do the sign up by using Google account, right? Where you don't have to yeah, do all the details. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that option is there, right? By clicking on Google or by clicking on Google. So here I logged into the I given my sign up actually. So and here uh, you want me to proceed with the skip tutorial and design process? No, 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 no. That I will that I will teach you. Okay. So all these components like what are there, right? Dashboard, cluster. So by default you have uh, been redirected to the console. Okay. There are different other screens as there. If you click on the left. Uh, top corner right where you have multiple dots symbol is there left to the console on the left top corner if you click there right left top corner there is a console is mentioned right kamunda console uh -huh, okay okay yeah left to that there are dots icons are there right uh, okay okay yeah yeah so there right there are different options are there so i will take you through with all them so uh what has happened right how to create a cluster, how to, what is modular, all these things I'll take you through. Okay. So what has happened is uh, after with the sign up, right, you uh, got the uh, enterprise version, okay, where you can, as you know, right, trial version is just to get the familiar with the product and they are giving it for the 30 days with one email ID. So if you want to learn it for more time, you can also use another email ID. That's not a problem. But yeah. With that, right, at least whenever we are discussing about all these components, you will be also having it in your machine, okay? And with that, right, you will be able to do some practices and hands-on as well. So, yeah, that is what I was expecting. And uh, Sarjanya, please confirm if you are also able to do that. Or if there are any challenges, right, you are facing, then 
please let me know. Uh, so then you are on mute. If you are speaking, right, just unmute yourself. Yes. Okay. For the, then the first part, I'm um, doing the rest. Okay. And I think you have joined from two devices, so you can mute. Uh, fine. So, uh, like Naga, if you can stop sharing, okay, and I'll start sharing it again. Maybe I'll take the control. Uh, Deepak, one thing actually. So, uh, I mean, this is just, uh, you know, on, I mean, you know, so by login, we are directly getting the, you know, common light version, you know, cloud version. Uh, apart from that, can we mm -hmm. get like uh, anything uh, common to server? Uh, so, what are the links you given with that? I can be able to install the platform common to server right? directly in my uh, system. Right? Absolutely, right? So when you are going to work on a project, right, you should be familiar with the components. Right? As part of this training, you'll be also able to understand the key configuration which has been required. So in organization, definitely you are not going to use the trial version and that won't be a plug and play. So we will be understanding how you can deploy it by a Docker, right? And how you can deploy, uh, start uh, your uh, Kamunda 7, right? The different microservices, how we can create a microservice which uh, will be uh, mostly being used into uh, production ready applications. So that we are going to learn. Don't worry about it. Okay. okay. Not only, even I'll try yeah. to, uh, I try to install the Kamunda 7 actually with the, you know, so with the documents, uh, I mean, one of the documents we have in the site actually, the Kamunda site. Mm -hmm. okay. So seven, right? Community version you can, yeah. Community version is free to use it. Right? You can install and let me share the screen. Okay. So, can you so as I mentioned, you right. What are the things that you know? So I, I know you have shared the thing. Uh, you should you are sharing the things actually some some like that. Can you just uh, you know uh, reshare it again? You know so that I'll follow the steps and I'll try to install the seven version that i have shared on the screen right uh, on the chat if you can see uh, only uh, these two things only in the download platform seven and again the model that those two things right? yeah. Yeah, this is, uh, okay so there are four links are there. First is to download the common diet, okay, latest version, which we have already done. Second one is to download the community version, okay. So when you do the download of the community version, what you'll get is one zip file that uh, you can extract and keep it in one of your uh, system location, right, which will be having this kind of folder structure, okay. So normally it has uh, the scripts of a database, okay, as to degree. And then it has some configuration files as well, where you can change uh, what you can say uh, properties when you are using some other uh, database as well, right? You want to integrate, so those you can make those changes. Okay, we'll see how we can make those changes as well in the open source. And then it has uh, like open source license version as well. And the important thing is these four files. So if you are using, uh, let's say, Windows, okay then shut down and start these two files are there which you can execute so you can open uh, you can redirect to that particular folder location where you have kept these files and after that to start uh, the Kamunda 7 community version right you just uh, execute this start.bat file okay which will boot up your Kamunda 7 with the latest version and you can uh, see the features what has been available there okay same way if you want to gracefully uh, stop uh, the Kamunda 7, you can uh, execute the shutdown dot bad file. Okay. And likewise, if you are using a Mac or machine, then you can use dot sh files. Okay. To start and stop. Now, uh, this is something for uh, where you will be getting access for the task list. Okay. As well as for the cockpit uh, when you are uh, 
uh, starting with the co community version and now uh, first time right it will be asking for the user credentials as well uh, on the ui so that user credentials right uh, the username and password will be demo as a username and demo as a password okay that you can provide with that you will be able to log in for the first time second thing is if you want to download the enterprise version of kamunda 7 okay then you can contact by using this form okay by giving the, all this uh, what you can say details with that they will be uh, like uh, product team right they will be understanding your requirement and based on that they can share the license version of okay? and with that right it will be having all the uh, what you can say uh, instructions in order to set up the enterprise version but again it will be just uh, similar to what you have done in kamunda right? it will be straightforward so nothing you have to make much worry about it just it's uh, like you will be executing dot sh files and dot uh, bat files so that you'll be able to start enterprise version as well but as a uh, product has launched the kamunda 8 right so by default they are giving the trial version for the kamunda 8 where you'll be able to understand all the uh, latest features and all So, uh, I have one okay. question in a deeper question. So, here, uh, when we directly install the Kamunda 7, uh, uh, the engine automatically will be. Can you speak a bit louder, Naga? Okay. So, when we install this Kamunda 7, I mean, 7 uh, enterprise version or personal version and community version, so automatically, the, along with that, uh, we'll get the engine automatically, or we need to explicitly uh, you know, download the engine also, like, you know. Uh, Spring Boot up with Spring Boot or uh, you know so any Microsoft Visual Core or something. Yeah, you're going so far ahead, oh, but it's the right question, okay? Like I think you already worked on some project, right? So what will happen is when you are downloading this, right? So it's a uh, these are the byte files, okay? So with that, right? Uh, embedded engines, right, will be part of your your application. You will be able to access it on the console by executing those byte files. So if you want, right, we can go through. With this files as well, what they are doing. Okay, it has uh, some some commands are there, right? Which will uh, like read the particular file which is part of your. Uh, you have downloaded one asset, right? So here, right, you don't have to create any Spring Boot application and other thing. But as I said, right, when we are progressing, maybe uh, early next week, right, or maybe next week later, we'll be creating one Spring Boot application as well. So we are right. Let's say when you are creating a Spring Boot application, just for a quick review. Okay, what you have to do is you should have some prerequisites where first of all you should have uh, one ID of your choice. Okay, after that, second thing is you should have a Java to be installed. It should be compatible with the uh, like what type of Kamunda version you are using. So until 7.14, I think JDK uh, 8 or 11 is sufficient. But with the latest version, JDK 15 is in uh, like uh, minimum, which is the requirement. So whenever we are uh, like setting up the Kamunda 7, which version we are setting up, based on that, you need to see the compatibility of Java as well as uh, the compatibility of your Spring Boot version. Okay, I think the latest one 2.3.7 should be sufficient. So, but we can see the release note. Uh, the prerequisite is you should have uh, Java to be installed. You should have uh, uh, Maven. So, Maven is something is a what you can say build tool which will help you to manage the dependencies. Okay. So, whenever you are down uh, creating a Spring Boot application, you should have some dependencies to be uh, injected in your form file. Okay. So here, right? Let's say if I'm using uh kamunda 8 here right okay so i'm using this kamunda version okay 8 version similarly if you are using uh for kamunda 8 version you have to get this dependency okay or uh, spring dot zb dot starter okay with that you will be getting the cloud native uh, engines by default okay for uh, uh kamunda related operations so, so like zb is responsible for uh, creating, deploying, and managing our workflows, which are been written into BPM and DM, right? So all this dependency, you will be getting it with this version. Okay. Apart from that, uh, other dependency, whatever you see, right? This is just a Spring Boot starter you will be requiring in order to start a particular, what you can say, 
uh, any Spring Boot microservice right, with the Spring Boot dependencies. And 8.1.3 requires a minimum of JDK 11 version. So with that, you'll be able to start uh, what you can say, Kamunda 8. However, same thing, right? If you want to do it, let's say you are more specifically asking for Kamunda 7, the process will remain same, okay? However, uh, the dependency, right? Just a moment. Yeah. So here, if you have seen, right, in Kamunda 8, we have used this dependency Spring ZB starter, right, which is from the group ID io.kamunda. And uh, we have this Spring Boot starter parent. Also, I have mentioned, uh, like, what are the ZB dependency? Uh, they are based on which JDK version and which Spring Boot version, okay? Based on that, you should have at least that particular minimum compatibility Spring Boot version as well. And that you can also see into the release docs as well. However, if you want to create a Spring Boot application for Kamunda 7, instead of this ZB starter dependency, what you require is you have to have this Kamunda BPM Spring Boot starter web of dependency, which is from the uh, group ID of org.kamunda.bpm.springboot. Okay. So if you have that word uh, dependency, you can make your uh, latest version which you want to use. Just ensure in this microservice, right, you have the specific. Uh, Spring Boot starter version as well as uh, the JDK version. So once you do that, right, with that your Kamunda engines will be embedded. Okay, that way, uh, usually when you are working into any uh, production application, right, and you are want to create it as a Spring Boot, you can get the dependencies accordingly with the Maven dependency. Apart from that, if you want to do it by a Docker, so they have a Docker image also available. So just uh, like I don't want to mix up all these things in one shot, right? Let's go step by step. So all these things, right, and topics are part of the learning, as I mentioned previously as well. So just uh, get familiarity with the tool, okay? Then we can see how, what are the other different options and uh, like what you can say, uh, different uh, ways of doing the installation of Kamunda, okay? But as a basics and to get familiar with the product, right? And let's understand the things in a very high level, okay? Where at least we'll be able to grasp all the uh, important features. And with the time and get going, when we are familiar with the basic feature, right? I'll, I'll go through with the creation of this uh, microservices as well, where we'll be uh, going to manage some uh, dependency. Apart from that, we'll be also configuring some e a properties into the application YAML and we'll be creating uh, the job workers as well in the back and that will be executing from the Spring Boot microservice. So just uh, wait for those topics to become right so that if I'll mix everything in one shot, right, I believe uh, there will be certain confusions will be there and you'll not be able to grasp it as, as so the way problem. and maybe or, or Yeah, sure. Yeah, no, it's really, uh, Thank you. No problem at all. Okay. So my uh, expectation here is at least uh, until the topics which we discuss, right? Uh, overview of BPM and Kamunda and uh, what is Kamunda 7, what are Kamunda 8, what are the core components, how we can do the installation, what are the different types of uh, download options we have. So based on that, right, we should be able to understand, right, uh, at least the trial version and community version, we should be able to install and test. Okay. <clears throat> now, once you do the uh, sign up, okay, that particular screen will be available. So first is the console. Console is basically, as we see, right, it is uh, kind of a, a first screen, which will be available. And it has three particular tabs, dashboard, clusters and organization okay so normally console has been used for uh, like doing some key configurations okay in order to manage your uh, uh, cloud clusters as well as in order to manage your secrets or if you want to do a uh, collaboration between different team sites right? and you want to create different users who can have an access for the different components of your uh Kamunda, right like uh, you want to give some view only access or you want to give some admin access to the different users you can uh, create new users and you can provide those particular accesses from console apart from that also if you want to create any secrets okay 
secrets normally in any cloud environment or kubernetes setup right we will create secrets which uh, required some sensitive information to be uh, handled right normally the user names and passwords or maybe key or its its value so those things right if you want to use in uh, our modeler okay so instead of hard coding them we can also create the uh, what you can say uh, secrets here by using console okay so dashboard will give you uh, an overview of kamunda 8 and if you want to learn few particular things right like how there are some tutorials are all also mentioned here uh, for basic things what is bpmn how you can orchestrate microservices okay what is a user task and what are the connectors so basic overview has been given with some tutorials of uh, 10 to 20 minutes you can leverage those tutorials as well which has been uh, like published by the product itself okay and you can get but also we'll be having this training right so all these concepts will be definitely uh, discussing so with the time all these concepts you will be able to learn then when we go to the cluster right you can uh, create a cluster okay so to create a cluster if you um, might be seeing here right i am already having one cluster here so in the trial version you can all only uh, create one cluster okay but uh, when you have a licensed version you can create multiple clusters so if you want to create a new cluster first you have to delete it okay the existing one and then you can create a new cluster so cluster is something uh, where is your uh, uh, pods are getting running right in which location and which zone uh, that particular uh, cluster has been running all these things uh, will be mentioned so like you can give the name of your cluster you can select the reason so i have selected the default reason of uh, sydney australia which it was showing so have gone through with that but if you want to make any changes right that will be available in your screen when you are creating a cluster so you can select the appropriate region based on your choice i just gone ahead with the default uh, configuration and then what type of version you want to use so if you see right here it is kamunda platform 8.3.0 alpha so what is alpha is basically alpha is basically uh, they'll uh, use the terminologies which are still being worked by the product okay and they are ready for the testing okay however they are not being recommended for the production applications okay because they are still being getting tested so these alpha releases you can get it when you are using the trial version okay however apart from alpha there are stable releases are also there which means uh stable release are those releases which has been tried and tested by the product and it is been ready for the usage of uh production ready application so whenever you see alpha related thing right just don't get confused that means is uh, uh it is still been uh like it has been developed and it is ready for the testing by their different customers and by the product itself okay and you should use it in order to understand what are the new features are going to come and they these these releases are not meant for the production ready application and apart from that you can see the status of uh, what you can say your cluster okay and if you click on that you can go into the detail of your cluster okay uh, what is the status of your different components right zb engine operate task list and optimize we'll see what are the details of that and what is the status so they all shows healthy uh, with the green sign which means there is no issues with them and if you want to uh, go to that particular uh, you can say component you can click on that and you can go to that also you can navigate from these particular options as well like if you want to go to the modeler just click on that and you will be redirected to the modeler so what is modeler why it is being used right all these things we'll discuss in detail but the as i mentioned before right this training is something you will be knowing about uh, the components when you go in, even theoretically as well but when we have this downloaded or set up right what we'll be doing is we'll be also understanding what all different features are available and how we can navigate to those features okay like even if you are navigating within the console okay or if you are creating your bpmn or diagrams or you are going to operate or optimize there are multiple sometimes for doing one thing right there are multiple ways of doing like the installation part right similarly when you want to do deployment okay uh, there are multiple ways of doing that so with that time right when we are discussing and moving around uh, to the subsequent sessions 
we'll be uh, also understanding what are the various ways of doing i'll start with the basic things okay the uh, which is easy to understand and learn as well and with that time we are progressing right i'll also share on the different ways of doing it so apart uh, when we go into the cluster we can this first page right it will show you the details of uh, the status of different component as well as the cluster details what is this cluster id is important okay when uh, you are creating your spring boot microservice right then you have to give some key configurations into application yaml so this is like what is the uh, zb cluster region what is the cluster id what is the cluster name and cluster secret so secret is something i'll tell you how you can get it so if you go into the api right you can create a new zb a new clients as well so for a particular uh, uh your your uh, cluster right you can create multiple clients as well so these clients will be uh, like helpful let's say when you are creating a client right you can give the scope as well that particular client will be required for which kind of scope so by default uh, we will be usually require uh, these clients when we are uh, going to integrate our what you can say spring boot microservices right with your uh, uh, what you can say with the kamunda zb engine where it is been running okay so you can create by clicking on that you can give some name and just click on create so once you create it right it will uh, give some key configuration details as well okay so you will be doing this practice by your own i am not doing it right now okay so that time you will get some uh, you, what you can say configuration details which you have to save okay uh, because it will be having your client secret as well usually just to give a brief right so when you are configuring your spring boot microservice you have this region okay you have this cluster id client id and client secret this secret right it is very important it is only coming when you are creating your client for the first time okay uh, so it will give you a pop up window as well uh, where it will have all these details just make a note of that this particular secret right you should not forget okay otherwise it won't be uh, retrievable next time okay so whenever you are creating a new client uh these details you can save it and that will be helpful when you are creating any microservice apart from that you can also create the alerts okay so uh, alerts is something when you want to notify some user side right? or you for some uh, what you can say uh, error instances or some exceptions are coming right so based on that you can create alerts so alerts again you can do it by two ways first you can configure some email id uh where there is a limitation of uh, what you can say one email id you can configure for getting the alert or you can also use the webhook so by using that right you can create uh, the alerts so, uh, so you want to report those alerts by an email or you want to do it by webhook so when you are using webhook right you can give the webhook url of your application where you want to redirect those alerts and normal cases uh, default cases email will be there so you can create that particular alert where it will be redirecting all uh, like exception instances to the uh, email id by which you have signed up okay apart from that there is an activity tab where you can see what all activities you have done so far right clusters you have created or okay, what is the name what is the update on that so it's just for a view only things of your cluster then there is a connector secrets are there so normally whenever you are using as i mentioned right in cloud environment you want to use any sensitive information then uh, what you can do is you can create the secret so secret is something key and particular value so how we can create those secrets right uh, for a particular cases when we want to do some authorization right or authentication based on some uh, sensitive information then we can create those keys and values we can maintain here so it will be stored uh, in uh with uh, the required security in your uh, saas based environment and those secrets right will be available in your modeler as well uh, so to use it okay so by using this tab right you can also manage your secrets apart from that cluster the third tab is organization where first is overview you can see what is the uh, plan and details of that particular uh, your your sign up and then if you want to create user site right, you can create different users so that is something it also provide collaboration when you are working in a team right and uh, there are multiple users who are going to access that particular 
uh, what you can say uh, Kamunda environment. You can create new users. Okay, based on that, uh, you can uh, when you are creating those users, right? You can invite them by using the email address, and then definitely when you are creating those users, right? You can also provide the role for that particular user. Okay, so these are the default roles are there. You can see six roles are there, which is admin, operations engineer, analyst. Task user, developer, and visitor. Okay, from top to bottom, the access right has been uh, what you can say degraded uh, for a particular component, and a description is also mentioned with the particular no names. Like if it is an admin user, you have access for everything. Like uh, Naga is one user, right, who is a uh, super user for that particular user, and he wants to invite another team member, right, who is also equally responsible to. To manage uh, certain things, right? In in uh, in his team, and he wants a full access. Then what he, you can do is you can invite that particular user uh, and can enable that particular role. Also, you can enable the multiple roles as well. Okay, if you want to do a particular combination, right? Based on that, you can <coughs> enable multiple roles as well for a single user. Same way, operational user is like a, a full access to the console and operate. Okay. But it does not have an uh, rights for deletion. Okay. Same way, analyst is like full access to the optimize. So analyst is something who are doing some reporting, dashboard, and uh, monitoring features, right? So based on that, uh, they will be having full access to the optimize and read only access to the other clusters. A task user is something a business user, right? Normally, who will be doing the processing of your task uh, for the deployed uh, processes. Then task user has a full access to the task list. Okay. So we'll go into what is optimized, but I think with the previous sessions you are able to understand what is optimized. Optimized is for the reporting and dashboard. So that's where we have an analyst role. If somebody wants to uh, work as a business user, then what is the task list? We already know where we can see uh, and view the task which has been for the deployed processes based on their role and access. So you can give the task user access for that. Developer will have a, a full access to the console, except again deletion privileges. So all these things are being mentioned here. And last is a visitor, which means if you want to give some read-only access to a particular user, you can give a visitor access. And same way in your application, if you want to create a user which should have an access to uh, what you can say task list as well as for the uh, what you can say optimize, but you don't want to give the access to the operate. Then you can give the combination of these two. So based on that, you can create new users or you can invite them with the different roles. Again, there will be an activity. What all activities you are doing, right? What is the usage? Okay, how many process instances are running? Okay, or how many DCs and DMNs are running? How many users are there? All these details you can see here. Then uh, there is a console API when you are dealing with the what you can say external API that right? then you can also create from here we'll see in, uh, and last thing is the plans and pricing of uh, what you can say of kamunda so different plans are there which normally if you want to analyze right after uh, working on a trial version if you want to see uh, you, you want to upgrade as well what are the costing and what are the features are available they have just summarized it here but again you can connect with the uh, pre-sales team or product team in order to get more details about it so that is more or less a summary about the console what all things you can do from using console in uh, tomorrow's session right uh, i'll take you through with the other uh, what you can say components of uh, kamunda console with that i'll stop and do let me know if you have any questions mm -hmm. so uh, Yes, Naga, please go ahead. No, I don't have any questions for right now. So, because today I'll uh, try and to focus on the installation. I mean, you know, we done the installation with the uh, other features or eight, and we yeah. got through all the possible options and all. Yeah. I mean, you know, in the after logging into the eight, eight version, there are no problem. We can mm -hmm. do it. Uh, so, we uh, insert tomorrow. Yeah, right. So tomorrow, right, we'll be continuing with the uh, what you can say overview of the core component. What is the purpose of that? Okay, in detail. And I'll also uh, like uh, now this is also available, right? 
so also i'll just recommend it you to uh, go through with the different options maybe um, you can check about the console or modeler as naga you are already aware of the vpm and concept right you just go through and see the details and from uh, tomorrow onward side will be i'll be completing all the different other core components then we can see what is the purpose of all this component and how where they will be useful mainly we'll be focusing on the uh, modular part okay initially and uh, just an overview about the task list optimize and optimize okay so yeah i think that's it for today